presentation would be by Dr. Su Cho Yang, Kreftne Research Center, Department of Internal Medicine and Clinical Nutrition, University of Gothenburg, Sweden. The title is Bio-Inspired Exosome Mimatic Nanovesicles for Targeted Delivery of Chemotherapeutics. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to say thanks for the, to the organizing committee that gave me a chance to talk here. Today, I would like to talk about the bio-inspired exosomic mimetic nanovesicles. So first, I will introduce about the new type of nanoparticles, so-called exogens. You may heard about these nanoparticles. This is the, the membrane vesicles, which has a lipid bilayer, and in size is from 30 to 100,000 uh, nanometers. Uh, cells naturally produce this type of vesicle into the extracellular uh, millennials. So they contain a lot of different type of proteins, as well as they contain mRNA and microRNAs. And this is very important for their uh, the intercellular communication between the cells. So first time they discovered as the intercellular communicators, but recently many people have developed this particle as a drug delivery vehicles. They have several advantages as a drug delivery vehicle, including that they have less immunogenic and then they are very biocompatible. And then they contain a lot of membrane proteins, which is very important for the target delivery. And also they are very stable in the blood. And in your, in your blood, you have more than trillion uh, number of particles in your blood. So the, uh, the other point is that they are in nano size, so they can avoid the, the phagocytosis by the macrophages, and then they can do the endocytic delivery. So until now, many, many papers have already successfully uh, uh, do the, the del drug delivery using uh, this type of exo exo uh, exosomes. The, the problem with this exosome is that I mean, cells continuously release the vesicle to the outside, but still, it's very little amount. So it's very difficult to uh, go to the clinical study. So to overcome this the limitation, we have been developed a different type of nanovesicles called exosome mimeting nanovesicles. So we try to mimic the exosomes, but we want to increase the production yield. So we simply, we you know, break down the cells to the nanosized vesicle using the extrusion method. So we pass through the cells through the different type, different size of pores, and then you know, result we can get around 100 nanometer uh, nanoparticles. And they are lipid bio membrane vesicles, and then they contain the, the, the membrane protein, which is very important for the target delivery. So we compare the characteristics of the nanovesicle with exosomes, and they are very similar in size, and also they have similar morphology, which is revealed by the electron micros microscopy, and then they also contain the almost similar protein expressions. The different thing is that the nanovesicle is uh, very, I mean, the production yield of the nanovesicle is 100-fold higher than the, the exosome, so if we compare with the same number of producing cells. So to use this nanovesicle as a delivery vehicle, we focus on the tumor microenvironment. So in tumor microenvironment, not only tumor cells, but also a lot of immune cells are present. So we focus on the macrophages. These macrophages are recruited by the, from the blood. I mean, basically it's a monocyte, and then they differentiate into the macrophage in the tumor tissue. And then they are recruited by the cell allergen molecule interaction between the monocyte and the tumor endothelial cells. So it is already known that tumor endothelial cells express a lot of cell allergen molecules, such as IK1 and VK1. And we also examined the expression in our tumor model. This is the murine colorectal cancer tumor models, and we could see that IK1 is expressed on the uh, tumor endothelial cell. The endothelial cell is labeled by the CD31. This is the endothelial cell markers, and they are colocalized in tumor tissue only, not in the other tissues. So this is the, our hypothesis. So we generate the nanovesicles from the, the leukocytes, such as the monocyte and the macrophages, and we target we try to use the target delivery to the endothelial cells, which express the cell allergen molecules on their surface. So we use the human monocyte uh, for the in vitro study with the human endothelial cells, and we use the mouse macrophage for the in vivo mouse study to match the, their origins. 
So this is the how to make the nanovesicle and the load the drugs into the nanovesicles. First, we suspend the cell in the media and then we add the doxorubicin and then we extrude the cells with the doxorubicin and then we finally purify the nanovesicle with the optic prep density gradient. So as you can see here, the, the nanovesicle contains the doxorubicin in, into the, in their surface and the inside of the nanovesicles. Uh, doxorubicin is visualized by the auto, autoprocins and then the vesicles is labeled by the green process dye and then they are very well colocalized each other. And then if we use the dose dependent concentration of doxorubicin on the solutions, we can see that dose dependent in increase of the encapsulation, encapsulation of doxorubicins. So for the first, we try to use, uh, see the in vitro targeting activity of nanovesicles. So we use the 13F alpha treated endothelial cell model. If we treat the TNF alpha to the endothelial cell, we can see the expression of ICAM1 and VCAM1 and other type of cell allergen molecules. In the resident state of endothelial cell, they don't express any this kind of cell allergen molecules. So the, if we treat with the, the proteins labeled the nanovesicle to the, these two different cells, we could see that only TNF alpha positive, which means that cell allergen molecule expressing endothelial cell specifically taken up the, this type of nanovesicles. So if we treat them with the toxolobin loaded nanovesicles, we could see that those dependent cytotoxicity on the endothelial cell only in the TNF alpha positive, I mean, not only, but specifically in the TNF alpha positive endothelial cells. And this is in fact also seen in the exogen, which is naturally derived the, the vesicles from the cells. And the nanovesicle itself, it doesn't give any toxicity up to five-fold a higher concentration. And if we compare with the free doxolubicin, we could see that almost hundredfold, uh, not hundred, uh, tenfold higher activity. So to see that actually cell allergen molecules uh, is uh, involved in the interactions, we uh, inhibit uh, the, those interactions with the uh, neutralizing antibody. And if we treat them with the neutralizing antibody, we could see the ovulation of the, this effect, which means that the interaction of the cell allergen molecule is very important for this uh, nanovesicles. So this is a summary of the in vitro study. So if we uh, use the, the monocyte drive of the vesicles, they can specifically target to the TNF positive endothelial cell and then deliver drugs to the cell and kill the, the endothelial cell. Next, we investigate the in vivo targeting activity of nanovesicles. We develop the colorectal cancer model of the mouse tumor, and then we inject them with the fluorescent labeled nanovesicles, and we could see that they are preferentially targeted to the tumor tissues. And we also uh, looked at this type of targeting using the in vitro, uh, intravital microscopy. This, uh, the video showed that this is normal skin of the mice, and then the red means the endothelium, and the Green is the nanovesicles. In the normal tissue, they just pass through the endothelial cell, but in the, in the tumor tissue, you can see that they are bind to the tumor endothelial cell, actually. And so next, we also examine the delivering of a toxolobicin to the endothelial cell. Actually, we see that with the confocal microscopy, and then the toxolobicin is actually colocalized with the tumor endothelial cell in the tumor tissues. So we, and finally, we examine the anti-tumor activity of these nanovesicles, and we see that those dependent inhibition of tumor growth, if we inject them with intravenously, uh, in, in, in a volume and in tumor weight-wise. Next, we compare with the, this effect with the fluid of solution, and then we could see that this effect is almost 20-fold higher than fluid of solution. So we increase the, their uh, uh, therapeutic efficacies. The important thing is that if we use the, the the free doxolubicin, which is give the same uh, anti-tumor effect as the nanovesicle, but they have the side, uh, side effects such as the white blood cell, decrease of the white blood cell count in the blood, and also redux reduction of the body weight. So this is a summary of my talk, and then the, the, the exocellular vesicle, also called as exosomes, they use as the drug delivery vehicle. They are very promising, but the problem is that they have very low uh, production yield. So we developed exogen mimicking nanovesicles. They are very similar with the exogens, but they are highly, uh, they are high in production yield. So we can, 
encapsulate the drug into another vesicles and we can deliver them to the tumor endothelial cell which expressing the cell origin molecule and then eventually we can reduce the tumor growth in, in, in vivo. And so in conclusion, exosome mimicking nanovesicles can serve as a novel delivery vehicle for the delivery of the anti cancer drug to the tumors. I would like to thank to my colleague in Sweden and also as well as most of the work is done in Korea. So I want to say thank to my colleague in Korea as well. Thank you very much. So any questions? You mentioned one of the issues, obviously, with, with nanoparticles is scale up <clears throat> yep. to produce enough material to be used clinically. With this, as with this methodology, what are the stability of these nanovesicles like? Because obviously, if they're going to be stored for use clinically for months and at different temperatures and this kind of thing, that might be a problem logistically for use clinically. So are these stable in different media for, di for different periods of time? Yeah, I mean, and stability is very important for the clinical uses. And we, we test them in different storage methods, like a different degree and different time and different uh, preservant. And we see that they are quite stable in any other conditions. I just wonder about uh, the production method. Do you know uh, if you retain what is outside on the plasma membrane, that that will be out on your vesicles or if they can be inverted during the process? Okay, that's a good question. Actually, we showed that in, in the paper, but I didn't present here, but they are mostly, most of the membrane protein are still outside is outside and inside is inside. Okay. They, they maintain have, that. Have you point. checked for phosphatidylserine that normally should be on the inside? Uh, I didn't check the phosphatidylserine, but only check the protein topologies. Any further questions? If not, uh, thank you.